Hey, what's going on guys? Danny Matei here with PT Biz and we're in Peachtree City, Georgia. This is Sean and Shannon Daniels here at the Mobile Athlete Physical Therapy Performance. We're gonna check out their new space, show you some cool stuff that they're doing, show off some equipment they're using that's amazing and learn about their journey to get here in the first place and what they're trying to do going forward. All right, we're here with Sean. Sean, what's up, what's man? Up, man? All right, good to see the space. So, Sean and Shannon started this uh, clinic together. This is Peachtree City. So this is this is Golf Cart Central, mm -hmm. from my understanding. Uh, tell me a little bit about the area, because Peachtree City is south of Atlanta, so yeah. suburb of Atlanta. Um, tell me about the space, why you guys like the area, and kind of what you're seeing in, in the area as far as being able to have a thriving cash practice. Well, we moved to Peachtree City uh, long before we had decided to start the practice. Yeah. And I really feel like Nate was a godsend to be here just because this area is just, it's just ripe. With, it's growing a lot. It's growing a like, lot. Yeah. It's, it was uh, a design community, I think, back in the 70s for Delta right. Pilots because it's so close to the airport. Oh, and okay. so um, it is it is full of people who love to travel mm. and have, I would say, probably a little more internal income. So yeah. it's a really great place to be. We moved, we signed the lease in May. Uh, we moved in in July. July 10th, was the July 10th was the first day here. Of 23. So this is like half a year, basically, a little, yes. little bit more. Right. Um, where were you at before this? We were at a CrossFit gym not too far away in Noonan. So about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes from here. Yeah. So, yeah, we started in a box, man. Yeah. Like 10 by 10. And that's the way to do it. How has that transition gone, you know, for you? And looking back, do you ever think to yourself, because I had days where I was like, oh my God, I wish I would have gone back to my gym and just stayed there by myself. And now I have way less problems. Like, how's the transition been to get to this point? I feel like uh, if you asked me a few months ago, I would have been really triggered by what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I feel like we're in a really good space. Uh, like, I think just in our situation right now, I mean, like yeah. all of those things have been really hard. When we moved in, we had just had our third child. Yeah. So like everything that you see here. Oh my God. Besides, there was a third child on top of a transition. Yeah, yeah. I was oh drowning gosh. and yes. I was on fire and like someone was holding my head underwater. Right. It was like it was terrible. Um, but I mean, uh, everything that you see here, we did minus the beautiful uh, painting. Yeah. Right? Um, Which is but, awesome. But it was um, that was probably the hardest part. I feel like the build out because she and I did almost all of it by ourselves. We had some friends and family that helped out with a bit of it, but wow. like we built the desk, like we painted all the walls minus the mural, like we we hung the cabinets, like Dang. we did the flooring, we did everything, you know. And so we we're just trying to save a buck because we knew that it was going to be really hard. And that was before we had our first hire, yeah, as uh, you know our our first PT, and then we hired a strength coach, and so. Our admin went out on maternity leave somewhere in there, and so it's like I picked up all that too. So, anyways, like yeah. it, it's been a, an interesting transition, but it's been, I feel like now it's been a little bit more of a reprieve. I've like yeah. been able to sit back and be like, okay, I can enjoy this for a second, and then I got to get right back at it. Right. Yeah, yeah. So. Tell me a little bit about the layout, why you guys chose this, and and kind of what you're <laughs> what you're using this for as well. So we we wanted to maximize the space as much as we could, and. We felt like the collapsible rigs, because there's there's a couple different ones that you can choose yeah, from. Yeah, these are these are cool because they you, they'll flatten completely out. Like yeah. so, if you haven't seen these, they'll literally be flush, not fully flush with the wall, but you can get them out of the way if you want to have more open gym space. That's right. We use them so much that we don't really find a need to put them away. Um, but you know, so I was going to have multiple providers. It was always part of my vision. This thing was going to grow. We we're going to be in multiple gyms. We we're going to have multiple locations. Yeah, That's still the vision, and. Like when we have multiple providers, like we are movement based, you know, fitness forward clinicians. So it's like, well, these gotta be out. We gotta be doing this. Like we're, we're back squatting, we're deadlifting, we're bench pressing. We're doing stuff like this with people every day. Yeah. And so we wanted to be able to have as, uh, we want to be able to maximize the space as much as possible. Yeah. Like I had a lady who, she had in stage uh, arthritis in both her knees. And she was like, hey, I have no more pain really right now, mm -hmm. um, but I don't have a gym and I just want to keep moving. But I know that these sessions are kind of expensive doing one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I've got several people like you that are, are asking me like, why don't we, why don't we create a class that mm -hmm. we continue to do this stuff and just lower the cost point? And so we're just trying to do that with as many people as we can. So it's like continuing on that therapy progression and just, in my mind it just doesn't stop, right? Yeah. And a lot of these individuals are not even a part of the gym in our area. Right. The people that we get, like sure, we get some that are, and we try to push them back to their gym, but the ones that don't, it's like if they stop, they know that their fitness will stop in many ways, so they don't have that coaching accountability. So I've been staring at this piece of equipment. I would love for you to show me what this thing is and how you use it. You because, pull it out? Yeah, let's pull it out. All right. So the freak athlete, huh? You know, so this was a, a, a Facebook buy, you know, like. Was it really? Uh, well, you, you got know, targeted or you just saw somebody using it? I got it? targeted, man. They got me. Um, 
I had been looking for some type of device that I can have in the space that I can do like Nordic hamstring curls yeah. or uh, I really wanted a GHD, right? Yeah. Like I get a lot of people coming with back pains, like how can I get you on something that I can use versatilely that I can still get some like low back distraction on, yeah. right? And so this, you know, the phone's listening, so it's probably gonna pop up Freak Athlete on my phone again later, but- Yeah, uh, yeah. oh yeah, but, but <laughs> everybody's gonna get it. That's ad. right. <laughs> but so in, in, it has like four different functions, but um, we use this thing all the time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop in this right here. This is, this is a, a no, it's all good. This is gonna be, can, this is the, can you do a Nordic test? I, I'll, I will fail it. Uh, I'm gonna fail it. Okay. <laughs> I'll, put, I'll take the six inch Rogue box and I'll put it in front. Yeah. But I'll, you know, we'll do Nordics here, right? So don't, don't judge me. That's, that's pretty good. I'll give you, that's like, that's, that's not bad. <laughs> you can transform into a GHD and then hyper extension. So we'll pop this guy up. Oh, uh, okay. So you can do back extension. I could lower this down. Right. Oh, so it's almost like a, you can almost make like a, like a Roman chair out of it. Can you, oh, yeah. I see, okay. So I can go, <clears throat> I can do GHD. I can pop this off and I can shorten, I can shorten the distance here, right? So if I want to do back extension, if I want to do reverse hypers, mm, dang. so I can hang on here, right? Um, and then this pad here can move and it can come down to this position here and you can do you can do hip thrusters with it which is really cool oh so, okay does that make I sense? What you're talking about but yeah. i think when you look at these footprints you've got to have a, a really like efficient piece of equipment mm -hmm. as many pieces of equipment as efficient as possible right like even just even something as simple as like storing the bars like that, just vertical, like mm -hmm. just saves you a lot of space. Or you're using wall space if you're not gonna do that, right? right. You're like a gun, you know, rack sort of uh, um, for, for the barbells. So I think this is cool, man. Not uh, and no affiliation with Freak Athlete, by the way. We're not getting a commission for that. <laughs> uh, this is just this is just like a cool piece of equipment I've never seen this before. Yeah. And from a conditioning standpoint, you guys have what well, you have three different options. So you got an air bike. You got, this is what, a C2 concept? Yeah, yep, yep, we got the bike erg and then we got the treadmill. Yep. yep. This thing, <clears throat> I'm gonna give a shout out to that. This thing's awesome. Yeah, it's I great. love these. And they're super space efficient, um, but just from like a pure, you know, zone two conditioning stand, if you wanna just like get on it and go, that thing's awesome. It's I really like that. It's super cost effective too, yeah. to have that, that bike, to have the difference between the two, like that bike right there is gonna be in hell and everybody hates that one, yes. right? But then to be able to get on this bike and it's like, okay, so, I mean like <laughs> yes. the, 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 the cost point, as I mean, you could look at a Watt bike, right? I mean, you can, get yeah. some, you can get really expensive with some of these devices. And so I felt like even though it's Rogue and Rogue is pretty expensive, this was actually a pretty good. Good. So these murals are great, by the way. So you brought up, you said you, you had a guy that's here in Atlanta that uh, that did all these, right? Yeah, so the artist's name is Shannon Lake. Shout out Shannon Lake, dude's awesome. Him and his wife did all this in yeah. a very short amount of time. But work of this, it was so cool. He came in, he freehanded all of this. And really? So yeah, all wow. the murals that are in here, um, he did all by hand. That's really crazy. Cool. Yeah. From a treatment side, right? Like b before you started your cash practice, what was your background in? Like how many years did you have in the profession? What settings were you working in? Like what did that look like before you ended up getting here? So I finished, I worked for a big PT mill, a uh, big, big, uh, you know, national company and hated it. I wasn't there for very long. I just, I saw the writing on the wall. I had always talked about owning my own business, but I still didn't feel ready. I didn't have the confidence. I went and did home health, um, made a lot of money really quickly, got burned even, you know, more burned out. And, yeah. and so we started this, this thing as a side hustle. So we had five years in, finally got the courage during COVID to be like, you know what, I'm doing it. Like, this sucks, I've gotta go for it. Yeah. What was the difference like for you to go from, so okay, big corporate, high volume, home health, which is, has, in its own way has its own sort of intense uh, variables associated with, you know, going to places, a lot of documentation, when you're sitting in traffic, all that. So then all of a sudden, you know, you are in a CrossFit gym, people are coming to you and you have a full hour with them. So like, what, was there a difference in how you started to treat people? Like the, the approach that you might take or the things you might be able to do with them? Yeah, I think in a very selfish way, uh, I think it's okay to say this, you go into some home health, or as a, as a home health provider, you go into some places that are not necessarily the healthiest, sure. the safest, cleanliest, right? So it was really great to work with people in a setting where there was a lot less roaches. Yeah. Like no roaches, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, sure. Um, so the, le the level and amount of documentation, that's one, right? A lot yeah. less of that. They're able to spend more time with them one-on-one. -on -one. So the transition was, was a lot 
uh, in the beginning, I think trying to fill time, it was like, oh, I can do this. Yeah, I can solve your problem. Wait, what about I think it's actually more valuable, 100%. you know, than what, what we maybe the hard skills we might think. It's just like the ability to have a conversation and to, I don't know if it's like motivating people, but maybe it's just like steering them in the right direction mm -hmm. um, and helping them make the right decisions over an extended period of time. And I think is really, really valuable. Well, you know, we all know the right answers, right? Quote, yeah. unquote. We all know the right answers. It's a matter of doing that. And right. sometimes you don't do that until you have a coach or accountability partner to, That's true. to help you do that, you know? I mean, I have boxes of tissues in my rooms because yeah. uh, those 45 minutes, oftentimes I'm sitting with somebody and they're crying. Dude, right? totally. I mean, like, it's like, it's not uncommon for someone to start breaking down because of the pain, how psychologically it has just affected them. Yeah. You know? And so once we get a breakthrough on that, it's really cool to see where they start to light up. Their life changes, you know? A lot of them right now, it's just sleep. We're just talking about sleep. I feel oh like my for the majority of the session. And it's like, man, I really get paid this much to do just to do this, to talk to you about, hey, let's not look at the phone and let's just go tuck in bed, okay? Yeah. Like, early. This space is amazing. It's, you guys should be really proud of this. This is awesome. But, you know, let's talk five years from now, right? You, the mobile athlete <laughs> is, what does it look like? We've got multiple locations. Um, I really like this small feel, so we'll probably stick with smaller clinics. Yeah. Um, easier to manage, I feel like, but um, my vision is to be in multiple gyms, multiple locations around the area, and yeah, it doesn't stop growing. Yeah. It doesn't stop growing. It's cool. Well, you guys have done a great job. You should be really proud of where you're at, and in such a short period of time, to be honest with you. I mean, you, you've not been, uh, mm -hmm. I feel like it's been, decades to get here and sometimes that's the case i yeah. was actually reflecting on that this morning i was like look how far we've come in such a short amount of time yeah and i hear i hear these horror stories of individuals going into business for the first time and they're like i need i need seed money and they get these like <laughs> these big donors to like give them money and there's uh you know these these big investors and and, and they're still in debt for that right yeah. like they got to pay that off and to be really proud to stay on two feet and to have done this and have no debt, right? Yeah, and, just, it. and just to get through it and to see how far it's come in such a short amount of time. Like it wasn't easy, but it could have been far worse. Yeah. You know, I mean in a in a strainful, stressful way. And we appreciate your time, man. We really do. And we got a lot going on. I know you're super busy. So yeah. that's it for this one. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace Tree City, the mobile athlete. You guys killed it. We'll see you on the next one.